Well, that is always a process in and of itself, getting this super low car with ground effects up on the lift. Got to drive it up on my man-made, poor man's race ramps here, then jack it up, then position the lift arms using hockey pucks, and then you can finally raise the car up. But it's done, we're ready to work on this thing. And the first thing it needs is to address the oil leak. And some of you guys might be saying, hey, didn't you already address that in the last Z06 video or one of the first one? I can't even remember anymore. And you'd be absolutely correct. But if you watch the Mercedes video right before this one, uh, we noticed that this thing is still leaking a little bit. So here's where I had it parked before this. It's not as bad. It's definitely better, but it's still, you can see a little bit of a puddle heading towards the drain there. And I'm not going to show you right now, but if I got you up under the car, you'd see it's still all over the oil pan. Maybe I'll show you in a second. But if you remember from the first video, my suspicion was that the AN fitting for the turbo return drain line that goes back into the oil pan might have been damaged. So I looked up these, basically these AN repair kits. I don't even know what you call these. 
Conical seals. So this is a seal for a Dash 10 AN fitting. I believe it's like a one-time use, almost like a copper crush washer that you use when you're changing your oil. Basically, you put it between the AN fitting and the AN bung, or on the AN bung, and it's supposed to kind of soak up the defect in there and hopefully seal that up, because I'm pretty sure that's where it's leaking from. So that's the first thing. Hopefully solve this oil leak for good. We're getting close. And uh, you know, it's really not that big a deal, but leaks bother me. I just don't want any leaks on this car. The other thing is my oil temperature has been all over the place this whole season. Um, you know, I'll be driving middle of summer. It'll be 200 oil temp, 200 ish, 210 degrees. All of a sudden it'll just drop like a rock down to like 30 degrees until the point that it, the instrument cluster says oil temperature low. And we obviously know that it's not. And then it'll do this like a sine wave up, down. So basically the oil temp sensor is bad as far as I know. Now the LS7 that this came with, the oil temp sensor was in the bottom of the dry sump, but because I converted this to a wet sump car for the turbo setup, I got the oil pan from some kid locally. Uh, it was out of an LS2 Corvette with God knows how many miles it was used. I mean, I had to clean the pan when I got it, so I'm surprised it lasted this long. Basically the oil pan, or this sensor, taps right into the side of the oil pan and functions as the oil level sender or oil level sensor and an oil temperature sensor. So I'm hoping to knock that out as well, hoping we don't lose too much oil. So those are two things that are right there, you know, on the oil pan that I want to get tackled and, uh, you know, get the, get the oil pan sealed up. Uh, so let's get this thing fully up in the air. I'll kind of show you and then we'll get to work. Oof, this is the oil pan that we just cleaned and got, you know, spotless in the last video. And it's just covered in this stuff again. And I'm almost positive it's not coming from this uh, drain plug there because I just replaced the seal on that. It's not coming from oil filter. It all seems to be coming from right up here, bane of my existence. So hoping to get that sealed up. And then over here, is the oil temp sender. You can see the brown part right there. That's the uh, where it threads into the oil pan. I'm not sure where the oil level is gonna be, but I'm hoping I don't lose too much oil when I unscrew this and hopefully get the other one in quickly. But yeah, let's, uh, let's knock these two things out, get that AN seal in there, get the oil sensor back in, and then we'll move on to the next thing.
Phew! What a beautiful fall day. Just got back from a rip in the Camaro. Got some stuff done on that. If you have not checked out that video already, I'll put a link up here. But we were back on the Corvette a couple days ago. I finished up the oil pan stuff. Got the oil temp sensor slash oil level sensor replaced. Here's the old one. That was messy. Probably could have or should have seen that one coming. Also got the AN thread repair, or not even thread repair, just your AN conical seal on there. And got a good look at the uh, bung that was on there. It's actually more damaged than I thought. So honestly, not that surprised that it was leaking. I'm really hoping that these conical seals will take care of that and basically reform that seal because uh, that's how AN lines seal is basically a press fit into that cone. Uh, so hopefully that seals it up. So I think we're done with the oil pan. So I already topped off my oil, the oil that we lost. Don't mind the filthy engine bay. We're gonna take care of that as well at some point. Up next on the list, you guys watched this video and maybe I think even the video before may have noticed the check engine light on this thing. And I scanned it a few days ago and I wanna say, insert B-roll footage here, it's like P0449, which is basically, once again, the same thing that we already replaced, I think in the first Z06 video of this season back in like April. It's like an EVAP vent canister circuit code, and unlikely that it was bad out of the box. So I'm gonna just kind of do my due diligence, go take a look at the wiring, make sure I didn't clip anything when I was doing the exhaust. Uh, I was reading online, some other people were saying that the vent tube that goes from that canister, or not the canister, the solenoid to the passenger side tank, Sometimes if that's pinched, it will throw that code as well. So yeah, that's where I'm gonna start. I already checked the basics, like the fuse for that solenoid, that's good, so it's not the fuse. So just gonna, I think we're gonna pop the rear, pass the rear tire off, see what we can see over there, see if I can find anything obviously wrong, and uh, yeah, hopefully get rid of this check engine light.
as is tradition on this channel, as it seems to be, uh, like over a week has gone by since I last checked in with you guys. I uh, went and got a battery for the Blue Cobra and then got caught up with that car and you know was out of town for a few days. But this past weekend, I washed up the Corvette and I'm gonna dive headfirst into a paint correction on this car. I bought this car in 2016 with 11,000 miles on it. It's got like 21,000 miles on it now. I did a paint correction and ceramic coat back in 2017 or 2018, I think. And the car looked absolutely perfect. It still looks pretty good, but I have not touched the paint since then other than you know my regular maintenance washes, two bucket method with grit guards. So the paint's still in pretty good shape, but when I had the garage floors done here, it did have to sit outside and it got a ton of concrete dust on it and then it rained and then it sat outside for a couple more days and I think that really did it in and I tried to use some products to remove the hard water spots. I think that might have damaged the coating a little bit and that was over three years ago at this point. So long story short, the paint needs a little bit of help. I showed some of the B-roll footage and uh, let me just kind of describe what it needs really quick. So I'm kind of a paint fanatic. You guys have seen my channel. You know, you know I like to perfect the paint, paint correct, all that good stuff. Sometimes my own cars kind of fall to the wayside because I'm working on other stuff, but this car's paint and black, you guys know black is gonna show absolutely everything. The paint is pretty good, but you know, four, five, six years uh, without any sort of correction. Plus, like I said, I had a little bit of an issue with concrete dust and you know, there's there's just water. And like I said, it does not, it doesn't bead water like it used to. Like I wash it, I blew it off with my leaf blower and you can still see all these water spots on the hood. And you know, you can quick detail this off. That's no big deal. That's basically what I've been doing for the past four or five years. But I ju it just needs a, a correction and a brand new ceramic coating. This is, you know, basically my pride and joy. I want it to look good. It's black. So if it doesn't look good or it has any amount of dirt or water spots on it, it kind of looks like crap. I know it probably looks okay on camera, you know, especially if you're 10 feet away, it looks mint. But, you know, if we were under direct sunlight right now, I mean, even under the garage lights, it's, it's not great. Also, paint is not supposed to sound like that. It's just, she needs some love. So I know this is a major change of gears for this video, but I didn't really think that doing an entire video on a paint correction of this car would be all that interesting and I really didn't want to do it. You guys have seen me do it a hundred times. You know what the process is. If you don't know what the process is, go watch any of my other, you know, rescue or project car videos. I've paint corrected every single one of them or check out any of the other videos on YouTube about how to paint correct, but it's a fairly basic, very tedious and, and kind of boring process, you know, up, down, side to side with the buffer and, uh, you know, then just sealing it all in at the end. So I'm gonna spare you guys that. I'm probably gonna time lapse most of this, but let me just go through really quickly, high level, what we're gonna do. Oh yeah, and forgot to mention, the reason that the car is up in the air is to give me easier access. Obviously these cars that are low to the ground, if they're on the ground, it's really a pain to buff and compound these areas down here. So when I'm doing these, I did the same thing with the red Z06, if you guys watched that series. I like to bring them up like 18 inches, get them more into a more, get them into a more workable area uh, makes the job much easier. Also allows you to pull off the wheels if you want to clean those, ceramic coat those, whatever you want to do, which is exactly what I'm going to be doing. So here's my supplies out on the bench. First things first, we are going to tape off any you know weather stripping or seals or anything that we don't want to get uh, all of our compounds on. Next thing is we're going to clay bar the paint. That's going to remove any uh, contaminants that are right on the surface or embedded in the clear coat, you know, sap, dirt, debris, anything like that get us ready for our polishing stage. Then we're going to um, decontaminate all of the paint and clean all of the paint with, uh, I'm in this case using Car Pro Eraser, I've just had this stuff forever. Uh, some people use like a isopropyl alcohol dilution mix. Some people use like a prep all wax and grease remover. Basically you want to get the paint down to zero. No waxes, no nothing, no sealants on it so that it is most effective when you move into your next step, which is compounding. This car doesn't have a whole lot of defects because I wash it correctly and I take care of it. Uh, so I probably may not need to do the whole car with a heavy cut compound. But if I do, uh, I've got my wool compounding pad here. In my experience, GM, especially C6 clear coats are pretty hard. So you might need to use this in some certain areas. Some of the lighter stuff, I might be able to use the microfiber, I'm sorry, the foam orange cutting pad. After that, to bring back the shine, I'm going to use Minzerna Super Finish and then my blue light polishing pad. 
And then to seal it all in, we're gonna ceramic coat the entire car and every exterior surface. I'm gonna be trying some products that a viewer of the channel was nice enough to send me, and uh, I'm really looking forward to trying those. But I'll check in with you guys before that. For now, time lapse. I've got many, many hours ahead of me of uh, you know polishing and compounding and wiping off and repeating. So hopefully you guys enjoy the time lapse, see the transformation of this you know decent black C6 Corvette. But man, this thing is gonna look perfect when I'm done. So. Enough talk, let's get to work. All right, well, good morning, guys. It has been a long time since I've checked in with you, at least in the real world here, not in the YouTube world for you guys. But I think last time I checked in with you was probably Monday when I started this paint correction. It is now Sunday morning. And I now have many, many hours into this paint correction. A few hours here, a few hours there after work. Yesterday on Saturday, we went through a two-step paint correction and we got this paint looking absolutely perfect. But don't take my word for it, let's check it out. Started with a clay bar of the entire surface, which removed a ton of you know stuff that was just etched into the clear coat. Like I said, you could feel it when you rubbed your hand on the paint before, the back of your hand on the paint. Now it is buttery smooth. So we removed 
all of those contaminants from the top of the clear coat in preparation for our paint correction. Top to bottom, front to back, this paint looks perfect. Um, it is a little bit dusty right now because obviously the paint correction process is a little bit dusty, but you know we were able to get all the water spots, all the swirls, all the scratches out of just about everything. The quarters, or I'm sorry, the front fenders look absolutely perfect. The doors, windows are dirty, don't mind that. But the paint, I mean, I had pretty severe scratching, you know, in this area. All that's gone. I've had a scratch here. I think it was from washing. I must have got a small rock or something like five years ago. There was like a circle scratch that bothered me for years here. Actually had to wet sand that out, but it is absolutely perfect now on the rear deck lid. Again, don't mind the dust. All the way around the car, absolutely perfect. Two-step, like I mentioned, we did the wool pad with a cutting compound and then the blue finishing pad with the finishing compound. Excellent results. So I hope you guys enjoyed the time lapse. Like I said, it's just tedious, satisfying, but tedious work and uh, not all that interesting to film. So very, very happy with the results we got. So now we need to seal it in. And the way we're gonna do that, you guessed it, ceramic coat. And to seal it all in, we're gonna be using G-Technic products. Uh, you guys have seen me use this in the past on the Yellow Cobra and uh, maybe even a couple other cars. We're gonna start with the Crystal Serum Light. This is your ceramic coating uh, base basically. And then uh, XO V5, which is uh, basically a, a hydrophobic top coat that's kind of optional, but I, th I think I'm gonna go with that for now. And then also we can do the wheels in uh, C5 wheel armor. More of the same, up, down, side to side. So we're going to start with one section of the hood or one section of any panel. Kind of go up, down, up, down, and then a basket weave pattern. Until you have equal coverage, you're not putting any pressure down. You're not trying to remove any defects. You've already done that. The paint should be perfect before you do this. We're just going to seal it in, get even coverage. 30 to 60 seconds, let it flash. And then you're going to wipe it off. I like to use two separate rags, get most of it with one side of the first rag, flip it over, get almost all the rest of it, grab your second rag, do the same thing. And the, the idea there is that you don't leave any of the coating behind because if you miss any of the coating, it's on there and then you're back to buffing. You got to buff it off. This stuff is not like your old man's turtle wax that he's got on the shelf in the garage. If you miss some ceramic coating that's been on the paint and it flashes and hardens on there, you have to buff it off. It's not gonna wipe off. Trust me, I did it on the Mercedes, my old Mercedes, the first time I ceramic coated something. And uh, you know, I backed it out in the sun, car looked perfect. There's one tiny spot that I missed. It's like a smudge that will not come off. You have to get the buffer back out and buff it off. And some of the uh, consumer, the professional ceramic coatings, uh, you actually have to wet sand them off. They are that hard. So that's a good thing about ceramic coating is it's so much better than wax, but you have to make sure it's applied properly or you're back to square one with buffing. So that's enough talking for now, I think. Let's get back into some time-lapse stuff, really finish up this paint. All we got left to do is wipe the entire car down with my CarPro eraser once again to completely surgically clean the paint surface, give the ceramic coating something to bond to. Probably do the glass as well, do the calipers. Got the wheels off and cleaned off camera yesterday so that those uh, will be ready for coating as well. So once again, I got many hours of work ahead of me to bring this paint to the finish line. So you guys sit back, relax, enjoy watching me work. Let's make this thing shine.
all about 16 microfibers, six or seven applicators, and many, many hours later, we're done. Woo! That was a lot of work, but well, well worth the effort. If you guys can't see already, this car looks absolutely amazing. It's actually the next day right now, as I mentioned, this stuff, no matter how you slice it, is time consuming. I spent almost the entire day yesterday just doing the ceramic coating. I did two layers. The first layer was crystal serum light, so you go all the way over the car, panel by panel, two, two rags, just very, very time consuming. Then the same thing with the Evo uh, V5, basically top coat. The paint is smooth, it's slick. I can tell it's slippery. It's just, it's gonna be, it's gonna look insane and uh, can't wait to see it outside. Also gave the interior a quick detail. It was still pretty clean from, you know, earlier this spring when I did it. Vacuum, condition the leather seats, quick wipe down, no big deal. Also you guys saw in the B-roll, powder coated the calipers, these uh, electric or candy blue calipers, buttery smooth, good to go. Also spent some time, put all four wheels up on a Lowe's bucket, decontaminated the entire wheel and ceramic coated not only the inner barrel, but the face as well, which should make for cleanup uh, easier going down the road. Oh yeah, did the exhaust tips as well. But man, guys, just look at this slick black paint. Shoo! All right, now don't wanna to give too much away. Let's get it 100% together, get the wheels on, get it back on the ground, maybe a little bit of tire shine and see what the whole thing looks like. I think this thing is gonna be perfect. Home stretch, here we go. And there is nothing better than a clean black car. Phew! Man, black is tough to keep clean, but you guys that have black vehicles know that when it is clean, there's nothing like it. Thing looks sinister. Well, there you have it. The lighting is less than ideal, but that's the time of year now. When you get out of work, it's basically dark out. But, uh,. Many, many hours of paint correction, ceramic coating. This car has needed this paint correction for years and I've just been putting it off because it's time consuming and I just didn't really want to do it. But 
But I finally put my foot down, said this car deserves to have basically perfect paint. 20,000 miles, 15 years old, 1200 horsepower Corvette, definitely deserves perfect paint. And uh, I'm glad I finally did it. This, uh, this thing looks sick, looks awesome. But yeah, guys, I know this video is kind of all over the place, but there's just a bunch of little stuff that I wanted to get done and then also paint correction make this thing look perfect didn't want to make its own video on it but that's going to do it for this one the boost weather is here it is freezing cold right now so i think uh in the near future here probably going to bolt on the drag pack that i have sitting on the wall in the garage right now for this thing maybe take this thing out on the highway make a couple hits and uh who knows what else we get into with this thing this fall but uh we still got four to six weeks hopefully before you know snow falls maybe even longer so uh, I'm gonna put as many miles on this thing as I can. Same thing with the Camaro. Also, you must thank Cobra guys. I've already started filming that video. Should have that out in a few days. I really wanted to get this done before I started on the Mustang because I knew I'd never finish this if I started the Mustang before finishing the paint correction. So this is done. So now I'm focusing on that. So plenty more content to come on everything. If you guys like the video, give it a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. We'll catch you in the next one.